31. It's going to seem redundant what we're reading this morning, but y'all hold on. We're, we're in part two of my series. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the, synagogue, in the synagogue was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commendeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out unto every place of that country, Round about. Turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 1. Mark, chapter 1. Begin reading in verse, we'll begin reading in verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Father, we ask a blessing upon the reading of your word by your grace. We ask a blessing upon the preaching of your word by the mercy that you give us. We Ask that it, 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 it be for your honor and glory for, uh, to help us make our way in this world, make, make our way in the kingdom of heaven. May we learn things that are helpful and useful to us. May we learn to contemplate these things, comprehend them, dwell on them, think about them, and help us to rightly apply them. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I know that that reading seemed a little familiar, right? Both texts are almost identical, right? Uh, I'm not going to preach through both texts. I'm going to pick one. But I wanted to read both of them. And we might allude to the other ones as we go, all right? Uh, we're going to start verse by verse in Mark 1, 21. So you're not going to have to be flipping around today. I don't think I have any kind of scriptures for us to scripture hop for. So be be comfortable with your hand on that page. All right, but I am I might allude to the other a little bit, but don't have to turn there. Uh, but in Mark 1, verse 21, it says, And they went into Capernaum, 
Y'all have heard of the, the Sea of Galilee? So, you know, it's right there on my map, so I'm not going to walk over there. But you can see that big body of water kind of three-fourths up on the page there. That's Galilee. And on that, there was a city, Capernaum, up there on the northern side of it. Y'all know the north, south, east, and west. So this picture just north on that big lake is where Capernaum was. That's where Jesus spent most of his time in that area. Uh, he, he did move all over Israel, but that's where he was a lot. So they went into Capernaum. A city in Galilee. That's the Galilee area that I just showed you from that, from that lake on out to the coast of the Mediterranean. And straightway on the Sabbath day, and in Luke it says on the Sabbath days, I kind of think that Jesus, that was just his way of life. That's what he did on the Sabbath days. He went into a synagogue. He entered into a synagogue, that's an assembly of men, Jewish men, who pulled out the Torah, the Old Testament, and read from the Old Testament in this synagogue full of men. Uh, so Jesus went into this on a Sabbath day and taught. That means instructed them. Sometimes we don't realize that that's what, that's what the Word of God does. Even in Jesus' day, it is a book of what? instruction to instruct you to what to live okay everybody lives no 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 it's an instruction on how to please god that's simply what jesus taught in this synagogue something different is going to happen today though that hadn't happened before all right he's not just going to teach you ever heard the expression put your money where your mouth is well, guess what I'm going to go ahead and read it. Luke 4.31 and, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. Alright, verse 2 of our text. Mark chapter 1, verse 22. And they were astonished. That means shocked with amazement. You ever hear somebody say something or do something and you're like, uh, what in the world? That's what that means. His teaching brought that out of people. Just his verbalizing of the Old Testament Torah, the Word of God, the way He taught, brought that out of them. They were astonished. You've been astonished. Could you imagine if Jesus came in here today and started preaching this text? Let me tell you what you would be. <laughs> astonished. But he, there's a little bit more coming. They were shocked and amazed. That is doctrine. That word doctrine simply means teaching. You know what we would say today? What's He doing in there? Teaching. We know what they'd say in the old English days? Given doctrine. Teaching. He astonished them with his verbalizing teaching of the Word of God. Uh, for he taught that why why were they astonished? For he taught them as one that had authority. I don't know if I've told you all this story before, but I used to teach welding. For the Votec instructor. Their welding class was in my shop. And he asked me if I would teach and help. And show them things. And yeah sure. And I would. And they, they thought I was king welder. And kids. And them students. And I didn't revel in it much. It was just another day of work for me. But when the, when the, when the instructor would walk in. Start teaching. Grab up a welder. And start welding. Cha-ching. They were amazed. I was, out, I was out of the picture at this point. You know why? That guy was a prolific welder. The best I have ever seen. Any kind of welding you can imagine? Anything. Just imagine. Any kind. Whatever. He could do it. And not only could he do it, he could do it better than everybody else. He could do it. And you know what else he could do? He could teach about it. He could teach why. That's where I was having the trouble. I couldn't teach the why things worked the way they worked. He could do all that. He was a prolific teacher. Well, if Jesus came in the door, guess what? He trumps all other welders. He trumps all other Bible teachers in that room. He trumps the best. He trumps the priest. He trumps the scribe in there. He trumps the uh, 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 the the, the, or, the great orator of the room. He walks in and trumps it all. And by him teaching, just him expounding the Word of God, they were all in amazed. You ever been amazed? 
what that's why this room was with him teaching. He taught with authority, like the like the man who hired me to weld. You know what I, I could you know what I had? Dunamis. That's the ability and the and the energy and the strength and the know how to do it. You know, I could just I could do it. But that man had this word right here. Authority is the word exousia. That's authority. I may have had a dunamis to go well, but this guy walked in. He had something far better than that. The man who taught, taught me and showed me. He would have the authority. Jesus came in. All these guys had the dunamis, you know, in the synagogue to preach the word of God. But then here comes this other. Here comes the man. He not only had the dunamis. We find that. But he preached as if he had authority. His man preaches with exousia, authority, the right. Let me read you something. Don't turn there. Luke 4.32 And they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. See our text in Mark says with authority. In Luke it says with power. But you know what word that is? It's exact same Greek word. Exousia. Sometimes that word's pronounced energy. But here it's power. So whether it's authority or power Jesus preached with the authority from heaven. Could, have you ever been debated? Has anybody ever debate you? Okay, let's talk about we're we're talking about church, right, Bob? Somebody ever debate you about the word of God? Somebody ever yeah, but you yeah, but you know the word says this. Blah, 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 blah. I don't think that went on with Jesus. I think when Jesus taught, everybody in the room, with the exception of this devil, we're going to run across here in a minute. But that's what that's their nature. Everybody in the room was like, you know, no arguing with this guy. You know, talk. that's the way Jesus taught. He taught with power, exousia, and or authority from Mark, exousia. Verse twenty three. Mark one twenty three. And there were in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. That word cried out in Luke four is means to cry out with a loud voice. He cried out with a loud voice. Must have been a preacher. No, this guy was a this guy was an interrupter. This was this guy who wanted to throw an axe. They want to throw something, a cog in the machine. He cried out with a loud voice. Let me read you Luke 4, 33. And in the synagogue there was a man which had the spirit of an unclean devil. And by the way, that should be demon. That's what this unclean spirit was. A demon. You know what that is? When Satan is the devil, there's only one. But when he was cast out of heaven, he, a third part of the angels went with him. They are now demons. They work for the Lucifer. He cried out with a loud voice Luke says saying verse or Mark 1 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God hmm wonder how they knew that I guarantee you how they knew that because of the way he preached and taught the way. He's just a man. Jesus was a man like all the other men, but he, the way he taught the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of their God, the Word of the Creator of demons, the way he taught, they knew who that was. They knew why he was here. They know the old story, by the way. Don't be impressed with people who know the Word of God because them demons, they know the Word of God better than any, and they knew it right here. They said, have you come to destroy us before the time? They knew who he was. Luke 4, 34. Don't turn there. Let me read it. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. It's a little bit redundant. You know, there's a lot of twofers. A lot of stories that are only told twice or told once, but in two different Gospels. And it, there are not very many of them that are so close together on words like this one is. I don't know if we're going to keep doing that or not. 
but you get the picture? Y'all, there is, we live in a world that before mankind came along was ruled by angels. Ran by angels. Way back, I, I, don't, I, can't, I don't get that. I don't understand how it all worked. God didn't even see, he didn't even see to give us any details, but we know that he created them first. And they live in the world that was created by God and the angels ruled it and the angels had the authority over it. Now, you know, they, you know the story, they lost that. They lost that authority, right? Don't know what happened with all that. I could, you know, there's books written, there's stories written, there's sermons preached about how Satan was cast out of heaven and why and all that details. I don't, I don't get into all of it. But for whatever reason, they lost their position. But they are or were in Jesus' day still here. And I, I'll say with confidence today, 2,000 years after Jesus Christ, they are still roaming this earth. They're not humans. They don't die. They don't get sick and die. They don't get old and die. They're eternal beings. They're here. They're here on this earth. Just like they were in Jesus' day. Jesus had a run into one. I'm not going to get into demon possession tonight or today, and I'm not going to get into the casting out of demons and all that. Uh, but all I want you to realize is, y'all, we, we sometimes get to thinking that we know everything. We don't know anything. You all know there's a war going on? A spiritual war? I think Paul alludes to it, and I'm going to get into this morning quite a bit in his writings. Principalities and high places. I ain't talking about men, y'all. I'm telling you, the devils are still at work. We, not, we never need to forget that. When you're studying your Bible, when you're praying, you ask God to help you in a sin-darkened, demonic world. That's the difference between our world and theirs, probably. We're told the whole world is totally de de demonic now. The stuff they pump out on the news is demonic. The stuff people are doing is demonic. We don't need to forget that. Be glad you are a child of God. Be glad you have the Holy Spirit of God that indwells you. You know why? Because greater is in you than he that is in the world. You know what that means? You cannot be possessed by a devil. Be glad about that. Can they influence? Oh, I'm sure. Absolutely. Every time we turn on the television, we're under the influence of demons right there. Every time we listen to music, it's demonic. We're under the influence. Demon, demons there, but they can't, they can't indwell us. But know this. They're there. They're real. And that's in this, this world we live in, one of these days, they're going to be exposed. It's going to come too late for the rest of the world. That day and the day of God's judgment, the day He pours out, it's all going to come about the same time. It's going to be too late. But know this. We live in a world where there is an angelic war going on and we ought to re realize that when we make decisions about anything. About what we want. About what we expect. How about this? Run it past the Word of God. How about this? Run it past God in prayer. Prayer don't work. People say, I've been praying my whole life. Ain't nothing changed. Maybe you're praying for the wrong things. You think God's going to answer a prayer if you ask for the wrong thing? Why would He give you? You know, we're children. We're, we're, I, I give my children wrong things all the time. God won't do that. I mean, I look back in history of you know raising my kids, and I'm like, that's a mistake that I did this or that. No, God don't make mistakes. And if God doesn't see fit to give you something, maybe it's for your. Well, actually, it is. It's probably for your own good. But know this: there's a God in heaven. He came to earth. He went in the synagogue and preached and intimidated the evil spirit that rolled around in that church. You know, there's sermons going on. There's evil. There's a demonic person in every church. There's somebody in every church that possessed with the devil. That's just, you can't prove that sort of stuff. You know, you see it here in the synagogue. Well, yeah, it is synagogue. We're 2,000 years later. But I know this. If there was, God take care of it. He will. Don't worry about demons. Uh, 
Oh, I could go in on stories about demon possession and casting out demons. Some of the stuff I've heard over the years, they're not going to. Uh, I, I, would, I, will, I will warn you this. I know of a guy who, a very solid preacher, very solid, one of the most solid Bible theologians you can imagine. His, he was squared away in his thoughts, his thinking, his preaching, his studies. Fooled around in that world for just a second when he first got into ministry. And he got scared. So he got horror. He Something happened to him so bad he tells me in detail of the story. Because I told him what I wanted to do one time about demons. and they ain't nothing, Don't mess with them. Don't even try to mess with them. Yeah, you can learn a little bit about them, but you can't handle them. You can't mess with them. But you can trust Jesus. Jesus can handle any of them anytime He wants to. You can see that from this text. Don't fool around with the demonic world. You won't fool around with somebody? Something? You, word of God. Study that. Study the Word of God. Get that in your soul, in your mind, in your life. And when you see some of these crazy things happening or hear these crazy things happening, know this, that this ain't our world and it's crazy because the, the demonic world is crazy. They're hateful. They're, you see it right here, cried out with a loud voice while Jesus was teaching the Bible. Disturb the whole crowd. Get everything all flustered. Does that sound familiar to you? Look at the world today. What is going on in the world today? What do you seem to hear? The voice of unreason. And it's taken over the airways. It's taken over the news. It's taken over your life. But know this. It's all going to come to an end. I don't want to get in on that. Let's finish. Let's try to finish this text. And Jesus rebuked. That means charged harshly. When you think of Jesus, do you think of a man that will do that? Charge harshly. You ever do that? I, got, I had the feeling of Jesus with flared nostrils dialed in on this man who interrupted him. This demon, he knew he was demon possessed. He knew it. Jesus knows all about that. He stood here on earth and, 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 and beheld Satan as he fell. What do you do with that? He saw that. He rebuked this man or this demon who was speaking through this. I don't know how that works. I don't know if the demon uses the man's voice. I don't know the last Hollywood. They make a lot of demonic movies. I don't know how he did it, but he rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. You know what that means, y'all? Shut up. Huh? That's what we'd say in modern America today. Jesus rebuked this man, this demon, harshly. He said, Shut up. He spoke harshly. He rebuked this man. Shut up and come out of him. Come out of this man. And when the unclean spirit, that would be demon, had torn or thrown him in the midst. Torn. Luke 4 says, thrown him in the midst. Spectacle. Oh, I want you to put two and two together. You know, two and two makes four. Let's add things up. You know what, you know what demons deal in? Spectacle. Trouble. This thing didn't just come out of this man. It tore him in the midst. It convulsed him. He had a convulsion. He convulsed. He didn't just leave. He convulsed this guy. Boy, they're, they're, they have a lot of audacity. Demons. The Almighty God standing here in Jesus form. He said, shut up and come out of him. And in his arrogance and pride, tore the man. Convulsed him before he left. Don't mess with demons, y'all. You can't handle them. Get the Word of God. Luke 4.35 And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. That's what Luke says. Mark 1.27 Alright, they were amazed at Jesus' doctrine, right? Taught us with authority. Look at verse... 27, and they were all amazed. Here, that word amazed means terrified. I mean, wouldn't you be? <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't been telling how long this man had been going to this synagogue. 
They'd have been telling, how long has man been interrupting that congregation for all these years? Who knows? You know, he's, you know, just put him, you know, put, put, put him behind. But now all of a sudden he's having a conversation with this demon possessed man and them demons. And Jesus says, shut up, come out of him. The thing came out of him, caused him to convulse. They never seen that in church. I say church and synagogue. And the people were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves. Verse 27, what thing is this? Luke says, what a word is this? What a word is this? What new doctrine, or is that word teaching, is this? For with authority, that's exousia. What's that mean? He's the man. He has all. When the cop pulls up here, and the policeman pulls up here with his badge and his gun, he tells you to do something, what are you going to do? You're going to do it. Why? Because he's the authority. What if I tell you something different? Than, what if somebody tells you something different than the police? Don't matter. He'll arrest everybody. He had, that's that word authority. He, for this for with authority, with power, with, with, with authority, he and uh, he exudes you, he commandeth even the unclean spirits or demons. And they do obey him. You see that word power in our text? You know what word that is? That's another word. See how old English is? Some words they use for different things. Sometimes they use the same word for different Greek words. It's, it's the word dunamis. You know what that means? Strength. Oh, back in my back in my honorary days, I had a run in with a police officer one time. I could have I could have in my dunamis took care of that business if I wanted to. Straight up. That per that that policeman would not even have had a chance. I had I guarantee it. But back in my younger days, more dunamis than that person did. I could have flipped him upside down, took care of that any, any second. But you know what he had that I did not have? Big old badge of what? That's right. So you read in the Bible, power and authority. What did Jesus have? He had all authority. But you know what else he had? All dunamis. Now there are policemen out there, by the way, who have both authority and they will pick you up and toss you upside <laughs> and arrest you easily. But you understand what I'm saying? Our God, our Savior, who's alive today, has all the authority, the badge, and He has all the strength. <coughs> trust me on that. Trust the Word of God on that. When I say trust me, I hope I'm rightly dividing the Word of truth. Trust the Word of God on that. Don't be impressed with this whole world that seems to have gone mad because the almighty God of authority and the God with all the dunamis can change it any time He wants to. By His grace, He is not. By His grace, He has not changed the world, but He will eventually. Trust me on that one. He's going to change it, but because of His love. For God so what? Loved who? The world. No, just, just Jews. No, just Gentiles. No, just just people over in Europe. Not Americans, we don't count. No, we do. For God so loved the world that He gave it, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have ever... God has offered everlasting life to every human being that breathes on the earth. And one of these days, that will end. Things are going to change then. I'm not an end times preacher. But I know this. God can with authority, with the badge of authority, and with the dunamis, he's got bigger biceps than any human being, and all the human beings together at once, he's going to take care of business. But right now, in his grace and his mercy, let us love the people of the world. Who's that? The person you come in contact with. Who's your neighbor? Your neighbor. The person that you run into, talk to, come in contact with, work with, talk to, do business with. Jesus loves them and He wants to save them. So don't worry about how the world's going because we know this, that God and His authority and power and strength can change it and He will one of these days, but not now. I'm not going to tell God when, are you? You're going to blow up on God and say, now Lord, it's time now. Come on. I have heard somebody say something similar to that. 
No. How about this? We just pray and thank, be thankful to that Lord and that God. Thankful for our salvation and the good things He provides. Luke, let me read you Luke 4.36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What word is this that with authority exousia and power, dunamis, he commandeth even the unclean spirits, and they come out of him. Mark one twenty eight, and then we're done. And immediately his fame. That means the hearing about him. Spread abroad throughout all the region and around about Galilee. Why did Jesus do something like that? For that reason right there. His fame means his the hearing about him. Hearing about who? The one who had all authority and all strength over even the demonic world, over all of the preachers and the teachers and the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests. He had more authority than all of them and strength. And why did he do this sort of thing? You know, this is early in the book of, of, of Mark. Uh, this is why he did it. To show the world that he can. And that he is who he says he is. Now we can choose to believe that or not. I choose to believe it. I choose to believe that I'm a child of God. But also that God has the power and authority to do whatever, whenever He wants to. But in His grace, He hasn't chosen to yet. So I can learn to live, have a life of grace towards others. Even uh, unlovable, right? Was you lovable? Was you worthy? Worth saving? So if God can extend His grace and mercy to you, can't you do that for others as well? Can we not worry about the future? Uh, let me read you what Luke 4, 37. And the fame of Him went out of every place of the country round about. So, I'm, so we've, we're about three sermons into part two of my series. I hope there's more to come. Uh, here, here, here's my. I try to close every service with this. Believe, believe what you read, or you can believe what other people say. One of the smartest men in the world right now. I, I, I watch him. I like listening to him talk. He is smart. He's very, very well spoken, pleasant. But he reads a lot of stuff, other men's stuff. You know, Doctor So and So, Professor So and So. He wrote this book back in the So and So. That's all he reads. It is good stuff, but ain't nothing better than the Word of God. That Word of God will trump everything Freud wrote. Sigmund Freud, great man, idiot compared to the Almighty. You want to read what? Go ahead and read what Freud. I say read it, but you want to read something good? Read the Word of God. Read about this man right here. The man. Learn about the man we believe in. Learn to trust him, not just for salvation, but for what? Life, everyday living, in the good times, when the air conditioner works good in your car, or when the air conditioner's not working in your car, trust in God. Whether you've got money or don't have a lot of money. Whether you're good looking or ugly. That's a big deal in America today. No matter. Trust in Jesus. Believe. Let's all stand.